Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Uh, I'm going to give you the picks for Ju June 3rd uh, playoffs tonight. I uh, also am going to be doing a show today between 3 and 5. We're going to talk about the Shifley hit on Evans. You might want to check it out. 3 to 5, the NHL Pearls of Wisdom show. Give it a subscription. You want to be there. You want to talk about it. I'll be giving my take. And uh, it may not be the most popular take in the world. Uh, but I'd love to hear what your take is on it. So let me know. Uh, you can even do it in the comment section here, what you think. And we'll talk about it there as well. Uh, as far as last night's games, um, I bring you totals and sides for every single game, of course. Last night's games, I did brutal. <laughs> I had Vegas PL. That's the only one I had. Uh, besides that, I, did, I had Winnipeg winning that game. How is Winnipeg not winning that game? against a Montreal team that had just finished a seven emotional seven-game series against Toronto, uh, only had one day off, and Winnipeg comes out like they're still on vacation. Unprepared. That goes on everybody in there. Paul Maurice, the players, everybody. There's. Did you see the Colorado, Colorado versus Vegas? Did they had a week off. Did they look like they had a week off? They were prepared and ready for that game. Winnipeg was not. And uh, Montreal was running on the momentum from Toronto. Absolutely, sure, but they're still going to be tired. And if you come out and play like you know you're playing against a tired team, and if you don't work them, you're likely going to beat them. And you come out playing a perimeter game and you're not putting yourself out there, you're not hitting, you don't have your legs moving, yeah, you're probably going to lose the game. It was, it's an embarrassing loss. And if next game, they better be playing like it's an embarrassing loss because, and well, of course, now we have the whole situation that happened with Evans and all that kind of stuff like that. So that series is going to be fantastic. But let's go look at what the games for tonight and uh, we'll see if we can do a little better than we did last night. Um, okay, Boston versus the New York Islanders. Um, I'm going Boston here. First game, uh, uh, they're, they're, uh, I think I'm going to go with Boston here. They're, this is the first game in back at, back in the Islanders' barn now. Oh, man. This is actually really tough. So far this, series, this, this playoffs, the first game back at home, the road team has won a lot of the games. And I just think maybe there's a, there's a little bit of awe or anticipation from the home team that maybe they get a little too comfortable. They got fans in there. Maybe there's a lot of, lot of distract, distraction because of it. Now, the Islanders are not a team to normally do that. But the truth was last game, Ras did not have his like superb, unbelievable self. wasn't his superb, unbelievable self that he can be. And uh, I, I know that the GOAT from Off the Wall Hockey, I was watching that stream last night with the Jets and Canadians where that hit happened. Not watching it. I was on the stream with Off the Wall Hockey. Got to check him out. It's going to be on tonight. Fantastic play-by-play -play guy. Um, and uh, what, am I, what was I going to say about that? Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> Sorry about that. He said that it's not Rass' fault Boston didn't play up to their standards either. And I agree. I agree. But if you've seen, with like the series we're going to talk about the next series, in the playoffs, goaltenders, fairly or unfairly, have to be amazing. And it, does every player have to be amazing? No. Unfortunately, it's not. In hockey, you can have players that are not amazing that game and still win. But if you have a goaltender that's not amazing that game, there's a more chance you're going to lose. It's the way it is. Is it fair? It doesn't matter if it's fair. Really, it doesn't matter if it's fair. It's just a fact. I think Rask will be back at her this this game. I think he'll be back to his old, back to his epitome self. And he did he play poorly last game? No, he wasn't. He just didn't play exquisitely. Barlamov did play really well, and uh, 
They, I, Boston also is going to have to change up their way of coming out of the coming through the neutral zone again and have an element of surprise against the Islanders because the Islanders' uh, anticipation and X's and O's that come from trots are amazing. And if you don't give them some surprises, they will anticipate your every play in the neutral zone and be there before you even know that they're going to be there. And uh, they're going to have to do something to change that. Boston has a game to do that. They've done it in the first game. I think they're going to come out hot uh, and uh, put the Islanders possibly back on their heels. Being on the road, though, uh, I'm still going to go the over here on the uh, over here over five. If Boston wins, it means that they did do all the things I just said. And they got down into the uh, Islanders zone a lot and pressured the play an awful lot and, and uh, probably score a couple uh, that way where the Islanders um, will, you know, probably pot two against Rask. This seems like a push either way, but I'm going to lean the over. We'll lean the over. Carolina versus Tampa Bay. Um First of all, if Trocek's not in, I'm probably going Tampa Bay, and the series is probably over, close to over. Pretty, you know, it'll be three games. How Carolina going to come back from that? Um, my play here, though, is I'm going to say that uh, Trocek. It appears that Trocek's going to be in, so I'm going to take Carolina on the puck line to keep it at the least close. They need Nedeljkovic to do just what I said. Vasilevsky is probably going to be Vasilevsky. Uh, in which case, I'm going to go the under here. I'm going to say Carolina squeezes this one out. Um, the thing that Carolina, and you saw it in, the, in this Montreal series, you hear about going to the net. You hear people talk about it all the time. You got to go to the net. You know, it becomes a cliche. But you really get to visualize it when you see what Montreal did against Winnipeg yesterday, especially Perry. On was it was it the second goal I think, and he goes directly at the defenseman. I was it Morrissey at the time, with the puck, knowing he's going to get crushed there, but he did so to move the defenseman towards him to open up a spot for Stahl, and he did and he did a, a beautiful pass just before he gets knocked on his butt, knowing he's going to get knocked on his butt, and Carolina has got to start playing that way. I know Brenda Moore's preaching it, but I'm not seeing it so far. I'm banking that this is the game that they do it. We'll see. If they don't, they lose. If they do, they win. I'm going to bank that they are going to do it because I believe they're going to put everything out on this one. This is the game. I don't know if they're going to win the next one, but in this situation, there's got to be an element of desperation. And with that element of, des that element of desperation – should be here for Carolina, and it pulls them through. Remember, they did outshoot Tampa Bay last game by quite a bit. Problem is Tampa Bay had the more chances. And the reason why Carolina outshot them is they were shooting too much from the perimeter, not doing what we saw Montreal do last night. I don't care about the shots on goal necessarily in the playoffs. You care about where the shots are coming from. And in this case, they got to get inside and put their body in peril and take the hits and score from the inside. I'm banking that that's going to happen. Okay, boys and girls, that's my full 42. That's all I got to give here today. I'm going to be on my show from 3 to 5. Go check it out. I want to hear what you got to say about that Shifley hit. You might, you'll might, you hear my take, and we can banter back and forth about it. Uh, thanks for hitting the subscribe and the bell so you can get this fine programming all the time. Okay, bye.